Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. This is going to be a good unboxing. Three of these are signature guitars. One of them I've been looking for, I think it's this one, for such a long time. People have been requesting it. And this other one I've been waiting on for over a year for Gibson to finally deliver it. But let's start things off with this one. The whole story on this one is I recently did an eBay hunting episode, and I saw this thing show up at a great deal. It was just the opening bid of the auction, but they were also open to offers. But there was also one competing offer, so I said, all right, I'm going to have to make this guy a really good offer above his price, see if he'll take it. And I was surprised when he accepted it, you know, shortly after I stopped recording. So if you're watching that, you know it's in here, but this is kind of an interesting way to pack it. So it looks like he went to a music shop and he found this big box that accommodates the Explorer that's in here. But to eat up some of the dead space, he put an extra guitar box in it. I just hope that this thing arrived safely because this is kind of a rare model. Oh man, I'm excited to see this one. I like these kind of more metal themed guitars. In the last Voodoo video, it didn't do that well, but I mean, I still think they're worth documenting anyways because this was a weird limited edition. The Vampire Blood Moon Explorer. So a lot of people were saying that those things were blood drops as the dot inlays on the voodoo. Nope, I'm sorry. These are blood drops. They're legitimate blood drops as the inlays. How cool is that? So this Swamp Ash body is really lightweight, like ridiculously lightweight. This has got to be the lightest Explorer I've ever felt. That's crazy. But this also has that red wood grain filler on it. But as far as the condition goes, this one's nice. That's one mean looking Explorer. But before we get into these other ones, let's go ahead and hear a word from our sponsor. I don't really have an official sponsor for today's episode, but I am now an affiliate partner of Sweetwater. So by using my special affiliate links, you can support the show on any purchase that you make on Sweetwater's website directly. So from computers to guitars, basses, picks, strings, anything that you buy on their website will support the show if you use my link. And in case you didn't know, that also works for the reverb links in my descriptions. All right, now the big feature. People have been asking and waiting for at least three years for me to find one of these things. I've been really picky about the price point because it's kind of like one of those bucket head guitars where they can fetch really high dollars when there's not a lot on the market. And then there's other times where they'll fetch like medium high prices, but sometimes you can find a deal. It just depends if somebody purchased it when the market was high or they bought it when it was like brand new and the prices hadn't been inflated yet. But man, they did a great job packing this thing. Double walled box. We've got a bunch of uh, plastic air bubbles in here, completely wrapped in bubble wrap. Now, judging by the shipping label, I think they actually had a UPS store professionally pack this. Sometimes you get your money's worth out of it, but other times they'll just send it in a box. So I would always suggest, you know, watching them pack it if that's an option. Because not every UPS store is created equal. But when it comes to high-end guitars like this one, you definitely want a good pack job. I think you guys can tell by the case that that's not a Les Paul case, unless it's like a giant Les Paul. Uh, let's go ahead and see what I've been searching for, for a review and demo for such a long time. Found it. The Tom DeLong Blink-182 Signature ES-333. So this is not a 335 like a lot of people will look at it and go, oh, it's a one pickup 335. No, it's a 333. So we'll go into some of the differences here, but first impressions. Now I kind of dig this a lot more in person than I was in photos. I mean, this is something that when I first saw it, wasn't necessarily a big fan. While I do know their stuff, it's not something that I've ever like personally followed a bunch. But there's a lot of Tom fans out there, so I will definitely be doing this as kind of a fan service to those guys. This thing is actually really clean. And I saw it show up on Reverb. It's like, yes, yes, that's the perfect price. Let's put the offer in, let's get it in. But you're gonna notice something. Huh. <laughs> 
Somebody added a tone position on this one. Normally this guitar only comes with a volume knob. So somebody has routed one more thing in here. Not a big deal in my opinion because it was done well and done right, but I'm sure there's somebody that's gonna pass on this one simply because of that. But hey, I don't care. It allowed me to get this guitar that I've been hunting for for a while. And this one's really clean. I'm really happy with this buy. Now let's go ahead and open this one. This has another interesting story. So I was editing videos, I think it was like mid afternoon. And then I saw this thing show up. And every time I see one of these, I get excited. But I happened to notice this is a guitar that I've owned before. And lo and behold, it's for sale by the same guy who just purchased it from me. I think uh, back in April, something like that, we had done a trade where I had gotten cash, and I also got that Jake E. Lee Charvel Stratocaster type thing. Now you might be curious, whatever happened to that review and demo? <laughs> well, it actually ended up selling on Reverb before I could, you know, have the time to do that, and the buyer wanted it to be shipped right away, but I accidentally lost the footage of me packing it up. At least I think I did, unless you guys remember me packing it up in a certain episode. So unfortunately that review is off the table. The only thing I really liked about that guitar is that, I mean, there's no tremolo system in it and it had that cool pearlescent finish. Well, I think you guys know what this is. It's my favorite modern era Les Paul coming to say hello. A bucket head. Oh my, what has this guy done to it? <laughs> oh my goodness. You know, now I remember this guy said he was gonna refinish it. Maybe it's a good thing I took it back. So here's all the modifications that he did to this. Interesting, that's all I've gotta say. So this is that yellowed headstock one. It looks like we have new Schaller tuners. Thankfully, it doesn't look like he drilled any new holes into this, but it, he switched this all to gold hardware. And we've got Pia pickups in here. So those are Ibanez in style. I mean, this it has a completely different than regular bucket head vibe to it. Looks like we got a uh, brass switch tip, gold securing plate, but at least he left the knobs alone and he left the kill switches in place. But yeah, this is that same bucket head guitar. So the rest of the story is unfortunately his job has been affected recently. So he had to sell one of his more expensive guitars. Thankfully for him, he didn't refinish it. But I will likely be restoring this back to original before I put it up for sale. I even gave him the option if he wanted to switch it back that uh, he could keep all this other parts. So I mean if you're interested in these Ibanez Pia pickups, I mean they're pretty cool. They'll eventually come up for sale as well. But I feel complete again. I always love having one of these buckethead signatures. Even if it's been kind of crazily modified. <laughs> but what are the odds of getting Buckethead and the Tom DeLong in the same episode? So that leaves this one right here. I've been waiting a year for Gibson to release this and uh, there's been a bunch of delays with this thing. I mean, I had pre-orders with two different dealers. They both ended up falling through for some reason, but thankfully Gibson recently reached out and they said, hey, we like what you're doing. You need access to guitars, just let us know and we can help you get them at a good price. So I kind of have a nice little relationship with Gibson with that. But you know what? I think I'm going to save this for a separate unboxing review and demo episode. So stay tuned for this one. So let's go ahead and pack some stuff up. First up today in our packing pile, this Spider-Man Mustang did not take any time at all to sell. It's such a cool guitar. A little bit disappointed on how many people viewed it, but thank you guys for whoever did watch it. I guess, you know, cartoon characters, anime characters, maybe they just don't do that well on YouTube. Well, that's okay. I like documenting the ones that I think are cool anyways. I mean, finding another one of these will definitely be difficult. Only 50 of them made? I really dig the design and I'm not much of a Spider-Man fan. As far as my first Mustang, I liked it. I just didn't really like this whole Vibrola system. Apparently they're a little bit finicky to get set up, but once you got them, they're okay. Now this one actually took a little bit longer to sell than I thought it would. This is that PRS Silver Sky Nebula. I mean, what made this one particularly fantastic and special is the fact that it had that flamed neck, right? And I looked at all the other ones on the market and they did not have that same figuring. I mean, now it's not like a super duper flame, but it's definitely something nice to see when you play it. Like certain angles, it really goes crazy. 
this was a great guitar. I had a great experience trying out the Silver Sky in general. Is it worth paying the premium for this finish? That's something only you can answer. I think as a collectible guitar, yes it is. However, if you're just a player, you don't care about what your guitar looks like, you can certainly pick up one of these like at half the price, and that's even brand new yet. I truly believe in the used market of these guys. I mean, they're selling anywhere between the high three to the low fives right now. And just kind of a, a fun story. This was going to go to Australia to two different buyers. They were both kind of flirting with it, but the one struck first, but then he's like, okay, maybe after I've calculated all these taxes and everything, I'll have it sent to my Texas address and I'll pick it up in about six months. So I have no regrets buying this thing, even at the scalper's price, because this video exploded. I mean, anything Silver Sky people tend to watch. And our last one to pack up today is that Fender Lead 2. I decided to sell it. I knew as soon as I would talk about it in a video, somebody would buy it. It was for sale for about a month or two. It's kind of a cool little guitar. Fender sent this one to me for an unbiased review. And basically, it's a cool blast to the past. That's the way I feel about it. Is it my favorite guitar? No, but I love the way it looks. I mean, this is definitely a really cool display piece. You can hang it up somewhere. I mean, it looks 80s. I think it would be fun to modify one of these things. I think uh, Daryl Braun did a video like that because Fender did a similar thing with him. But let's go ahead and get it packed up and sent off to its new home. Thank you, Chocolate Ice, for tuning in to this Boxing Unboxing episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out those links in the description, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.